Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to convert an RGB image to a CMYK image in C Sharp. Let's get started. Alright guys, so we're just starting out here with a blank C Sharp project. And the first step is going to be to open the image that we want to convert. I'm choosing to open it as a bitmap just because I find that that's pretty easy to work with. So my file name is woman.jpg there. And I'm also at the same time going to be opening four other images. Right here I only opened three but eventually I go back and add the other one. So we're just going to be opening up four images to hold the cyan, yellow, magenta, and the black or the key so the woman picture already exists but these other ones don't so they're going to be created so i'm just going to create them using the woman's pictures height and width so they're all the same so the next step pretty much just your basic nested for loop because we're going to want to iterate over every pixel in the original image and then for every single pixel, we're pretty much just going to convert it to the CMYK spectrum and then output it to the corresponding image. You can see right there, we're getting the pixel at our current indices. The next step is really just to follow this formula right here post a link to this down in the description. The first step is to just normalize our RGB values, which means pretty much just divide them by the largest possible value, which is 255. Colors are typically from zero to 255. So what that's gonna do is gonna just turn it into a value between zero and one. So the K ratio is given by one minus the max RGB. And there's a little handy tip for you. Max only takes two values, but if you nest it like that, then it'll take more than one. So you can just keep nesting it. Yeah. Wow. So after that, we're gonna be figuring out the uh, ratios. I'm adding a small number because when your pixel is perfectly black, what happens is the K ratio is going to be one, which will cause a divide by zero error. So I'm just adding a small number. doesn't really matter how small. You just need it small enough so that it's not going to warp your values. But I also found out you can't go too small or else it causes overflow issues. So don't try and use the minimum double value, which is what I tried to use. Just go ahead and do something like I'm doing here. So after we get the ratios that I'm getting from that formula sheet that popped up, after that we pretty much just need to convert them back to an amount between 0 and 255 since doubles are not really valid pixels on a bitmap. So that's all I'm doing. And the last step is really just to convert our final values to a pixel. And in this case, I'm doing ARGB, the A standing for alpha. And so our ratios are going to control the alpha value. And we'll convert the pixel that way. There's a few ways that you can do this. I'm choosing to do the alpha value um, so that I can have some sort of transparency because like you'll see here in a minute, I'm going to layer my four images on top of each other to show you how they uh, can combine back to look like the original image. So here I am just setting the pixel of the corresponding image. So cyan pixel will go into the cyan image, magenta pixel will go into the magenta image, so on and so forth. Thank you. 
So you can see here I am going back and adding that last image that I forgot to add. And really after this, the only thing left to do is to just finish up our images by saving them to a certain file name. And I'm choosing to do this in a PNG, like I said, because I'm doing an alpha value and PNGs support that. Not all picture formats support the alpha channel. So if you're trying to do what I'm going to show you here in a second, then you'll also probably need to choose a format that supports that. So keep that in mind. And that is it for the code. We'll go ahead and run it, make sure we don't have any errors or anything. And it looks like we're good. All right guys, so I got my images loaded into Inkscape here so we can take a look at them. These ones that I'm dragging right now on the far right are the ones that the program we just wrote output. So they are the true pure yellow, pure cyan, pure magenta, and pure black images. Um, the ones in the middle that I'm dragging right now are a little bit of a variation that I did. Um, the only thing I really changed was that I allowed the saturation to change. So they're still fully cyan, fully yellow, fully magenta, but they can be varying saturation levels of each of those colors. And then the image on the bottom right here is the uh, original image. So you can see I think the one in the top left actually looks a little bit better, but the one in the top right kind of looks a little more similar to the original image, I think anyways. So you'll find if you do any more research into all this color spectrum stuff, you'll learn that the next step is to, it's called color calibration. So looking at these on a monitor, is a little bit different than printing them out on a page because monitors display and blend colors and there's a lot of factors that can affect how something looks on your monitor. All right, that wraps it up for this video. My next plan is to make a video on how to stipple an image. And then my last video of this sort of mini series will be how to make TSP art. And so my goal is, is to try and make multicolored TSP art. So we basically take an image, put it into the CMYK spectrum. For each of those four images, we then stipple them, and then we turn them into TSP art, and then we overlay them back onto each other. And yeah, I think it's going to look pretty cool. If you don't want to miss out on that, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification, because as you probably already know, I don't post that often. So if you don't hit that notification, you'll probably miss out on that. That's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching.